Welcome to ARW. In the uh, radius cutting, you know the rounded corners business, there's two functions, the smooth R function and the simple R function. And the difference in between them is that, uh, well, I'll just read it right out of this page from the book here. Then I'll read you their, their uh, advantages and limitations. All right, the smooth R function provides maximum flexibility in radius machining. The R sector to be machined by the co coordinates of R, which is R center, R radius, R start angle, R end angle. Advantage, very flexible. R function can machine virtually all kinds of radius, even the intersected radius. Limitation, relatively a bit complicated to operate. Operator needs to calculate and enter the coordinates of R center, start angle, and end angle. All right, now the simple R function, which is guys like me and you are going to be using, I'm sure, if we use it at all. The simple R function is aimed to machine only simple R or round corners. The DRO provides the eight types of most frequently used R machining processes. The advantage, very easy to use. Operator does not even need to calculate the R parameters. Just position the tool at the start point and then the type of machining and then start the R machining right away. Limitation, restricted to eight types of preset radius only. Cannot machine more complicated radius such as intersected radius. All right, so there you are. That's, that's your choices. And if you have something complicated enough that you need the smooth R function, you probably got a, a rotary table and other things like that, maybe even a CNC machine. So, you know, I think that you probably wouldn't even use it then, but that's that's just me. I've had uh, I've had a DRO for years now on a mill, and I have not made the first radius on a piece of project work yet. Just learned how to learning how to do it in the in the practice. Okay. Now I rehearsed this before uh, before I did the actual video, so that I wouldn't look like complete and total idiot and uh, so uh, I found a problem there and, and so I started tinkering with it until I found out what type to put in to make the curve I wanted all right and it won't hurt you to tinker with your DRO it'll you'll figure out a lot of stuff just sitting around playing with it get some artificial metal put it in there and start cutting doing all these different functions all right, like I said, let's get on with it. The eight procedures that you're given are these <coughs> in these pictures here. They just show three different versions of, of the eight. And every DRO has this, this same function. I've got a picture of the manual of the D80 here. Let's take a look at it. There's the uh, manual for the D80, and there's your eight uh, different R functions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay? And the others, like the two auto and such that I've seen, they all have this same diagram, same picture, the same function, simple R. Okay? All right, when I started out, I wanted to put my tool here and make a cut a radius around on this corner well what happened the first time I did it was I set it up like this the tool was on the corner and it curved out the wrong way now I did it a couple of times just to make sure that you know that I wasn't doing something stupid but it did the same thing every time so then I got a magic marker I put it in the drill chuck and I started off here with function one. I was put the uh, I put the magic marker right there and it went this way. Alright, so what was one supposed to do? One was supposed to start here and go well start down here and go up to the right. But instead it started down on the bottom and went to the left. So then number two is supposed to start on that edge and come around still making the same kind of a radius two started here and went 
around the wrong way. So I went to three. Three started here and came down to here. Four started on the edge and went to the right. So now that following that was following the manual. So when I reversed the thing and I told it I want to use a type one and I put my tool right uh, right there I made the number four arc now I don't know if that's my fault or the manual's fault or something I don't understand or what but we're going to start over with it and I'm going to tell it I want a type one which is uh, the starting at the at the bottom and curving that way all right so tighten down this artificial metal in my uh, vise and let me get the instructions I printed out the instructions so that I don't have to get my manual all dirty <laughs> I guess that's one way to do it, right? Okay, so I'm doing forbidden things. I've got a a, uh, a router bit that I'm using to cut this artificial metal, and I've got it in a drill chuck. All these things are forbidden, but I'm doing it. So try not to, you know, try not to roast me over all this, okay? So we're going to have to start off in the absolute mode. Well, just get out of the angle first. They're in the absolute mode. I've got to position the drill bit, uh, the drill bit, the uh, router bit right down by the wood. Okay, the instructions say to start with the bit right here because we're going to cut this guy right here. We're going to cut up and to the left. And that's the type 4. All right, so let's move on over here, and we've got to make that zero zero for both axes. Zero zero. All right, that's what the book says. Dearly beloved, it's in the book. All right, now here is the radius function. I hit that guy, and it, you can choose between smooth R and simple R. We're doing the simple because I'm a redneck. All right. And it says type 1. Now I could put in 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now we're going to want to make the same cut as the picture shows a type 4. But I'm going to put in type 1 because this is the one that went the right direction for me. Okay? So we've got that one. Enter that and make an arc in the xy axis. Okay. Our radius is going to be, uh, we're going to make it three quarters of an inch. So, 0 0.750. All right, next thing we're going to do is our tool diameter. It's a 3 eighths router bit that I've got there, so we're going to leave that at 3 eighths. And right, the maximum amount we want to cut each time, I'm going to make it 50 thousandths. Okay, that'll be the max cut. That means I'll probably have to do nearly 20 cuts to make this circle. Okay, now we've come to this R tool. If you put a minus in there, then uh, it, it's going one direction, and a plus, it's going the other direction. The minus means that it's going to be an inside uh, radius instead of an outside. We want to do outside, all right? So we go to number one. Number one's at zero, zero, because, well, that's where we're starting out at. So we'll go to number two, and it wants me to move the X to, to well, what we'll do is we'll zero all these two numbers, and that'll put us in the right position for what we're going to do. So I'm going to lift up the tool. I'm going to turn the X to uh, zero. That's the wrong way. Not much of a move on X, but it was a move. All right, that should be pretty much zero. Now we'll move the Y. Move it down to zero. Okay. 
okay there now then we will take a look at the tool there's our tool sitting there just above the work I'm going to start it up punch down and that that barely did anything we just sort of shaved the surface and I may not have been tight enough against the surface in the first place but now we go to uh, two I mean three so now we've got to move the uh, x-axis again and it's also a small move this time Alright, now then let's move the Y axis. It's a much, I think it's a much smaller move than we did last time. We start off with the big moves on the Y axis and we're going to end up with the big moves on the X axis. Alright, go down and take a look at what we're doing. saw it shave off a little bit more wood, uh, artificial metal all right we'll go right back and do number four see the x-axis is getting bigger each time all right and the y-axis right now is staying nearly about the same size move it's not getting smaller as fast as the X or I should say the, the Y is not getting smaller as fast as the X is getting larger that makes more sense alright now we're going to look at our tool again Off more chips. Go back up here, and I'm going to do a few of these off camera. Or well, starting with with this one, we will speed the camera up so that it looks like it's happening real quick. Artificial metal, and that's it. It's over. All right, so we've made our radius, and I'll get a radius gauge, and we'll see what it looks like. All right. Just in case you thought I was lying to you about the radius gauges, I've got actual, genuine, stereo radius gauges. They just don't go that big. Yes. And you can see that taking the 50,000th of a time step, it's pretty smooth. Although artificial wood doesn't do very good when you're cutting against the grain. Not as smooth as it would have been if I'd been going the other way. But there you are. And this was a, the, the number four radius done with a <laughs> type one setting. I don't know why that is. I asked the guys who know about the DRO, 
and they said they'd ask the guys that made it. So I don't know what to say about that, but there you are. And uh, the, if, if I had told it I wanted to make bigger moves like 0.1 inches, I wouldn't have had 25 or so steps. I'd have had like eight or nine, you know. But uh, nevertheless, there's our radius right there. And it looks pretty good to me. Let's go and see what Bubba or one of his cohorts is doing. Seems like uh, down to where Bubba lives, that drinking's kind of a sport, you know, kind of like the bowl games and, and stuff like that. And uh, so, you know, the, the local sheriff there, he decided he'd catch him a few drunks, and he parks just a little ways down the street from the local bar. A little bit, here comes Bubba, you know. He stumbles all around in the parking lot, looks around a bit, stumbles over, digs all in his pockets, and after a while he comes out with a set of keys. He stands there and looks at them a bit, and he goes up and he tries to poke them into one car, and they don't fit. He stumbles over to another car and tries to poke it in there, and they don't fit. Finally, he gets down the car, and it fits the door, and he opens the door of it and sort of falls in the seat. So a couple of folks come out and drive off, you know, while he's doing that. So in a little bit, he sets up in the seat a little bit, and he's got the door shut. And he sits there for a while. A couple more cars leave, you know. And he, he turns on the key, and he's got his windshield wipers going there. And, you know, it had rained in days. And, you know, sure sitting back, yeah, he, he knows he's got him one now. And... Uh, so by the time Bubba gets around to getting the car started up and getting his lights on and the wipers off and all this, everybody else is gone. And Bubba backs up in the parking lot, you know, real slow, comes forward real slow out on the road. He's driving, you know, really slow down the road, straight, kind of concentrating like. Sheriff comes up there with his lights on, whips in front of Bubba and stops, gets out and says, all right, boy, get out of that car. I want you to blow in this here breathalyzer. So Bubba got out and he blows in a breathalyzer. It reads zero, no alcohol. Sheriff says, all right, get in the back of my car. I'm going to take you down to the station just to get, to, get, a, get a good breathalyzer. This here's got to be broke. Bubba says, no. He says, I doubt it. He says, uh, actually, he says, tonight I'm the designated decoy. 